What's going on guys? Welcome to your 20th tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build a Sentinel controlled program. Now let me explain to you guys what that is. You remember in the last tutorial where we built that program and we ran a loop five times and each time we allowed the user to enter a number? Well sometimes we're going to want to build programs where we don't know how many times the user wants to enter a number. So if you like we're calculating the average uh, grades for kids in your class. You know how many kids are in your class. If you are calculating the average age of like people in your family, you know how many people in your family. But if we built a program and we just sold it to everyone in the world, everyone's family has a different size. Every teacher's class size is different. So we don't know exactly how long to make that loop last. So what we do instead is we give it a special code and this code is usually something like negative one and we use this because ages and weights and you know number of things cannot be negative one so whenever we enter negative one this is when our program knows to stop and you know make its calculations or do whatever it does so let's go ahead and I'm gonna be building a program that we enter the ages of a bunch of people how many we don't know yet but we're gonna enter the ages of a bunch of people what our program is gonna do is figure out how many people we entered and calculate the average age of all those people so let's go ahead and it's pretty much an age averager if I was to make this program I would name it age averager 5.0 why 5.0 I don't know I just like 5 so let's go ahead and we're gonna need some variables the first variable we need is some place for the user to enter and store that age each age at a time so they're gonna enter someone's age like 32 we're gonna store it in the variable age after this we need some way to keep track of all those ages a total so if they enter 32 then 32 we want this to store the total which would be 64 because we're gonna be averaging it later on so int just name it like age total and this of course is equal to zero first but it's going to be the total of everyone's age combined and the third thing we need to keep track of is how many people did they enter so you take the total over how many people they entered and this gives us the average age so int number of people entered and I don't really like making variables that long because it's easy to make a typo the longer your variable is but it's descriptive for this tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is just write a prompt on the screen. See out, um, enter first person's age or negative one to quit. So what we're going to be doing is our code is negative one. Whenever we get the input negative one from the user, we know we know that they want to quit the program. So let's go ahead and then give them something to enter age so they're gonna enter a number and it's gonna be stored in the variable age so now we just need to test to make sure it's not equal to negative run and we need to loop this program as many times as possible as long as the value is not equal to negative one so as long as age is not equal to negative one go ahead and run this program and at the heart of this program is this what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking that age total and it's going to be a running total of the old age total plus the new value that they entered for age. So the first time, say they enter 6, it's going to be 0 plus 6. The next time they enter 10, it's going to be 6 plus 10. So the total would be 16. So then when we divide it by the number of people, which would be 2, their average age is 8. So let's go ahead and now, each time this loop runs, it means that they entered a new person. So let's go ahead and just write number of people entered plus plus because remember plus plus is the same as adding one to it each time so now we said alright our age total is good and the number of people entered is good so now every time we run this loop we want to give them another opportunity to hit negative one or enter someone's age so make another C out and just write something like enter next person's age or negative one to quit so right now they're going to enter negative one or someone's age and let's just go ahead and end that line so now semicolon there we go so now we're going to store that value in age so they're going to keep running this and every time it runs they're going to have a chance to input input an age 
what this loop is going to do is check and it's going to run the loop over and over and over and over again until the user enters negative one. Once they enter negative one, it's going to say, all right, that's my sign to bail out of this loop and go ahead and make my calculations. So for calculations, let's first go ahead and make sure our program is going to work properly by saying, let's first tell them number of people entered. And I know I spelled that wrong, big deal, who cares? And now we just output number of people entered, looks good, end line. And after this, what we want to do is we want to find the average age of all those people. So see out average age, and then we just go ahead and the formula for average age is age total over number number of people entered. For example, if your age total is 100 and you entered 10 people, then the average age would be 10. So let's go ahead and run this program first to see if it works, see if I forgot any semicolons or anything. All right, so the program is up and running. It looks good. So what I like to do whenever I build programs like this is I like to enter values that I already can calculate in my head just to make sure that the computer is calculating. So let's go ahead and enter a person with the age of 10, the person with the age of 20, and a person with the age of 30. Now I know that whenever I average these together, 10, 20, and 30, well that's 60. So 60 divided by 3 is 20. So I'm going to be expecting 20. And that, that way I know that my uh, uh, program is working correctly. So let's go ahead and quit by hitting negative 1 and go ahead and hit enter. And it says number of people entered 3, which is correct, 10, 20, and 30. Average age of them is 20 because 60 divided by 3 is 20. So that is pretty cool and our program works fine number of people entered, it got that right, and it calculated their average age right. So that's what I like to do before I enter big numbers like 87, uh, you know, 68, 5, and all those. Like 5 is a real big number. So anyways, how our program worked is this. What we did is we built three variables. Well, let me just go ahead and skip to the good stuff. It says, all right, enter the first person's age. And we went ahead and we entered 10 right here. So it says, all right, is 10 equal to negative one? Nope. So let's go ahead and run this right here. I'm going to go ahead and store 10 in age total and change the number of people entered to one. And now go ahead and give me another age. Well, we went ahead and we entered 20. So now 20 plus 10, our age total was now 30 and our number of people entered was two. So it said, all right, give it to me again. We entered 30. So now our age total was 30 plus 30, which is 60, and number of people entered was three. So then it said, all right, now give me another age or negative one to quit. We gave it negative one to quit, so it bailed out of this loop and it went ahead and just make the calculations. For this calculation, it just printed out the number of people entered, which was three. And for this one, it said the age total, which was 60, divided by the number of people entered, which was of course three. 60 over three is of course 20. So again, that is called a sentinel control loop because we can run this program in, it doesn't matter how many numbers we enter, you know, we're not limited to five or 10 or anything. As soon as we hit negative one, it calculates how many people we entered and their average age. So again, this is a much more dynamic program in the sense that you're not only limited to a certain number, but you can disperse this, you know, maybe a bunch of different types of people, and it doesn't matter their sample size. Any size, any amount of people in this program is still going to continue to work fine. So that is the beauty of a Sentinel controlled program. These are the loops that you're going to be using more often rather than, you know, a fixed number. So get used to it, become familiar with it, and once you are, you're good to go. So for now, that's all I have for you guys. In the next tutorial, don't know what I'm going to be covering, but my throat is dry now, so I need to go get a drink of water, and you need to watch more of my videos or something. I don't know. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.